What are your thoughts, by the way, about current systems? Where they stand? So GPT-40, Claude 3, Grok, Gemini. We're like uh, on the path to super intelligence, to agent-like super intelligence, where are we? I think they're all about the same. Obviously, there are nuanced differences, but in terms of capability, I don't see a huge difference between them. As I said, in my opinion, across all possible tasks, they exceed performance of an average person. Yeah. I think they're starting to be better than an average master student at my university, but uh, they still have very big limitations. If the next model is as improved as GPT-4 versus GPT-3, we may see something very, very, very capable. What do you feel about all this? I mean, you've been uh, thinking about AI safety for a long, long time. And uh, at least for me, the leaps, I mean, it probably started with Alpha Zero was mind blowing for me. And then the breakthroughs with LLMs, even GPT-2, but like just the, the breakthroughs on LLMs, just mind blowing to me. What does it feel like to be living in this day and age where all this talk about AGIs feels like it, like this is, <laughs> it actually might happen and quite soon, meaning within our lifetime. What, what does it feel like? So when I started working on this, it was pure science fiction. There was no funding, no journals, no conferences, no one in academia would dare to touch anything with the word singularity in it. And I was pretty tenured at the time, so I was pretty dumb. Um, now you see Turing Award winners publishing in science about how far behind we are, according to them, in addressing this problem. So it's definitely a change. It's uh, difficult to keep up. I used to be able to read every paper on AI safety. Then I was able to read the best ones, then the titles, and now I don't even know what's going on. By the time this interview is over, they probably had GPT-6 released, and I have to deal with that when I get back home. So it's interesting. Yes, there is now more opportunities. I get invited to speak to smart people. By the way, I would have talked to you before any of this. <laughs> this, is, this is not like some trend of AI. To, to me, it's we're still far away. So just to be clear, we're still far away from AGI, but not far away in the sense relative to the magnitude of impact it can have, we're not far away. And we weren't far away 20 years ago. Because the impact that AGI can have is on a scale of centuries. It can end human civilization or it can transform it. So like this discussion about one or two years versus one or two decades or even a hundred years, not as important to me because it, we're headed there. This is like a human civilization scale question. So uh, this is not just a hot topic. <laughs> it is uh, the most important problem we'll ever face. It is not like anything we had to deal with before. We never had birth of another intelligence. Like aliens never visited us as far as I know, so. Similar type of problem, by the way, if an intelligent alien civilization visited us, that's a similar kind of situation. In some ways, if you look at history, anytime a more technologically advanced civilization visited a more primitive one, the results were genocide every single time. And sometimes the genocide is worse than others. Sometimes there's less suffering and more suffering. And they always wondered, but how can they kill us with those fire sticks and biological blankets? And I mean, Genghis Khan was nicer. He offered the choice <laughs> of join or, or die. But join implies you have something to contribute. What are you contributing to superintelligence? Well, in the zoo, <laughs> we're entertaining to watch. To uh, our humans. You know, I just spent some time in the Amazon. I watched ants for a long time, and ants are kind of fascinating to watch. I could watch them for a long time. I'm sure there's a lot of value in watching humans. Because we're like, um, the interesting thing about humans, you know like when you have a video game that's really well balanced? Because of the whole evolutionary process, we've created the society that's pretty well balanced. Like our our limitations as, as humans and our capabilities are a balance from a video game perspective. So we have wars, we have conflicts, we have cooperation. Like in a game theoretic way, it's an interesting system to watch. In the same way that an ant colony is an interesting system to watch. So like 
if I was an alien civilization, I w- wouldn't want to disturb it. I'd just watch it. It'd be interesting. Maybe perturb it every once in a while in interesting ways. Well, we're getting back to our simulation discussion from before, how did it happen that we exist at exactly like the most interesting 20, 30 years in the history of this civilization? It's been around for 15 billion years. Yeah. And that here we are. 